Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today we are going to get back to orchids again. And uh, it's about time, I think. And we are going to make a YouTube orchid video, which is something I've not done for quite a while. Uh, I'll have a look around all my orchids and there's a little bit of a story behind most of them. So I will update you on them. And I've got a few questions for people who are more experienced orchid growers than me. So I hope you hang in tight there. And right at the end, I'm going to show you a couple of new orchid purchases as well. So let's jump in. And we are in. It's an absolutely filthy, horrible day today. Uh, we had a really nice sunny day yesterday and today it's dreadful. It's like some kind of hurricane. It's blowing a gale, it's really windy, it's obviously overcast, it's extremely rainy and it's just horrible. The, it's one of those days where the rain goes horizontal, it's uh, blowing that much. Um, would you believe yesterday I was actually talking about having a barbecue, but look at it today, horrendous. So suffice it to say, I'm not going out gardening today, so I thought we would make an orchid video and catch up on all my orchids. So we're starting off with this Epidendrum Comet Valley. I mean, I always forget the last couple of words, so let's see if I can uh, grab hold of it. There we go, the label, Orange Star, that's the one. Epidendrum Comet Valley Orange Star. So I made a video about this not that long ago. I'll probably stick a card up somewhere. I always do this, I take the label out and then I can never get it back in again one handed. So it's put on a great show and you can see the some of the bottom blooms now are beginning to drop off. Uh, but it's lasted, I don't know, probably about six weeks so far. It could be more than that, it could be a couple of months. And it's certainly not going to be completely gone. Uh, in the very very near future. See I've took those off now and I've got them in my hand I don't know what to do with them. just have to put them down. It's fine where it is I think. It's probably one of the, the, the lighter brighter spots in the greenhouse and I know they don't like total direct sunshine. Temperatures about 10 to 25 degrees. It's certainly it's not been it's not been below that for a long time not since midwinter yeah, but the temperatures have definitely been above 25 degrees Celsius without a doubt. Um, even yesterday, I mean, and what we now are coming towards like three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way through August. Uh, so the sun isn't quite as strong, but when it does come through, I am kind of directly face on to the, to the sun. So where it is now, even though I've got 60%, 65% shading up, um, it does get quite a lot of sun through that shading so this is perhaps why we're getting some blackened leaves in spots now it could be that this just happens naturally I know on a lot of canes of dendrobium and various others the, the leaves do naturally fall off so I'm wondering whether that could be partly to do with that or it could just be that it's in the sun it's certainly not cold that's for sure um, but I don't really want to move it because the, the only, only other spot, and we're getting pretty, uh, if we just kind of pan round here, we're pretty full in here now, but the other area that I've got is kind of over here, which is probably too shady because I've got like a shade cloth on there, which is an 85% shade cloth. Um, so anyway, it, it's okay, and I, as the days go by, the sun isn't quite as strong, and it's certainly not strong today. <laughs> There's no sign of the sun today. So yeah, I mean it's tons of roots on it now. I'm really pleased that we've managed to to get that to to do its thing properly, and it's loads of roots, like aerial roots, there going down. So that is definitely a success. And I don't know if you remember from the other one, we had another little epidendrum here, nearly finished, and I didn't repot this because it was already in bloom. And these are like thicker canes than the Comet Valley. So what's this one? This is Ballerina. And this came in this like kind of horrible, I don't know what the heck it is, I don't know, but it's coming out of there. As soon as those blooms are finished, it's coming out of there, it's going in a transparent pot so I can see what's going on. And I think most of those roots will likely be dead, but at least we've got some new ones coming here, some new growths, a couple of new canes as well. So that's my epidendrum. And over to the one that I know what this is called now, of course. This is a Dendrobium nobly star class Apollon, we think it is. And it is, I did again, I did a video on this. There's not many plants in here I've not done a video on, to be honest. So this one is going over now, but there are still some kind of new buds that haven't long since come out. I mean, I talked about this as being the easiest orchid for a beginner, and it's certainly tons of flower power because 
this is an amazing mass blooming which it just keeps coming and coming i think this cane at the back i think these are all new blooms these ones over here well like i say these are these keep dropping off now which is fine i'm, I'm i don't mind that see there's another one i don't know what to do with now um what i don't like so much is the fact that it does burn rather easily and again it, it is being shaded there is a shade cloth there but it's clearly not enough i'm pretty sure that must be from the sun definitely not cold because we, we don't have the cold and if you look it tends to be on the top of leaves as you get further down the plant the lower ones and top, did i say top of leaves the top leaves uh, lower down the plant uh, aren't too bad it's just the ones that you would expect will get hit from the sun these ones down here i'm not sure what that is that kind of a funny puckering i think it did at one point have spider mite it's one of those that i wasn't too sure but i spread it anyway just to kind of cover all bases but the leaves stayed like that this is actually quite a, a an old cane that i'm still getting blooms on you know, the newer canes uh, do have this nice kind of glossy leaves on them it does make a lot of keikis i have taken one off uh, i've told i've taken two off but i've got to that point now that i mean i don't like them when they've got the keikis on. i don't like the look of them so i always remove them and i did used to pot them up and now i think well what, what for i don't want loads of examples of the same plant i would rather use that greenhouse space to have something new and interesting and different so uh, because of that i pulled the keikis off i was going to give some of them to my friend but uh, i think i'll i mean i've, I've kept them but I, I might do if he if he pops around we'll see it's uh, we're still we're still suffering from these local lockdowns here where i live uh, we but i think it's wednesday what day was today tuesday so tomorrow we come out of another local lockdown so uh, i may be able to nip around and give him the the keikis so that's my uh, dendrobium there and we'll zoom in on my Burragira Nelly Isla Swiss Beauty. So again, did a video on this one too. Uh, this one had like some really tall green growths on it and it had several spikes last year. But I think the cold did for this one and possibly at the same time some damage because when it was cold and sunny, we're, we're talking like March time, so it would have been frosty overnight and during the day because it was so cold i'd not yet put the shading up but through the glass it can be quite damaging so i and it was only for about four or five days but i missed the uh, the window there to get my shade cloth up and this is the result well this isn't the result the result was loads and loads of i mean you think those leaves in the middle have got black on them it completely blackened most of the leaves um, and I, I guess the fact that I let it go down to 7 degrees didn't help but I think it's more likely to be the sun damage to be honest so it's thrown up some new growth, some new blooms but notice how they kind of all splayed out on a like a 45 degree angle which I thought was a bit weird because I really want them to go up right in the middle um, and it had no roots either but I mean all these growths now are absolutely solid and they weren't previously and you can just see there there's another another little spike coming there as well that is a separate one it's not a branch of the first so i think we've rescued that one and uh, i know what to do with it now i am going to leave it in the cooler side of the greenhouse down to 12 degrees over winter and i'll probably do another repot just to kind of reposition it over the well the next time it's due for a repot probably before next spring okay if i just take you towards the back here now this one isn't in bloom but this is the one that ed gave me from ed's orchids so this one is uh, Phragmopedium Ainsworthii and uh, I mean new to me but what I like about it is that it keeps blooming and as it this kind of bloom spike keeps coming and coming and coming it will bloom and then it will branch off and do another bloom another bud and then that will fall off and it'll branch off and do another one and, and that will fall off they don't bloom for a, a great length of time each one tends to last about a week and then it drops off for a week in here and i've got another spike down here i must confess i'm not watching it anywhere near as much as ed told me to water it and that it's just time that you know i've just not not got the time to do like a daily watering of it and uh, since our little puppy fudge come along i don't seem to have time to do very much these days it's it's been it took rather a lot of negotiating to get in here let's just say to get this one filmed so that's my fragmopedium mains worthy I, I would definitely have another one because another fragmopedium because i like the fact that i keep getting these 
these buds and these blooms so yeah that's a nice one and just over to the left here another one not in bloom but it's a cambria yeah i've got three bloom spikes on that one and i just want to show you something on this because i bought this one well it's over 12 months and it and it was in a, a good condition when it came and it had loads of blooms on it they're really nice blooms i know people are a bit sniffy about cambria i believe cambria are or is like a generic name for some kind of a, a cultivar of many like a, like an intergeneric you know crossbreed thing i'm probably using the wrong terminology there but it's like it's like the mongrel of the orchid world should i say and uh, they're supposedly very very easy to grow and as you can see this is testament to that um, I didn't repot it because it's kind of come in a really weird, as they do, all these orchids do, all the ones I buy anyway, they never come in what you want them to, to come in. Uh, it looks like a right jumble uh, of roots, so I've shied away from doing doing that. And the, the fact that I know they're supposedly very, very easy to grow, so I thought, right, well, I'll leave it a bit longer, I'll get another blooming out of it, and then I will somehow try and untangle those roots so i guess that's going to be a winter job by the time these spikes are finished okay i want to focus in now on my oncidium sotoanum and here we go now i'm not going to tell you about this one so this one has got tons of roots on it it's looking brill in the root department uh, and you can see the one spike however What's so kind of attractive about Sotoanum to me is when they produce lots and lots of spikes. And I'm not really sure why this one hasn't. It's in a well-lit position and I believe they really do like lots of sun. And again, I believe they are one of the rare plants that can take practically direct sunlight, certainly for some part of the day. I know they do like a, like a drop in temperatures and again I can only give it what it gets in terms of um, the local conditions here I can't I can't get it to drop at night when the temperatures are say in the middle of summer say it's already 18 20 degrees overnight I can't get that to go any colder now whether I get any more spikes from that I don't know this was a, a smaller plant uh, I could have bought a larger one so it may just be that the other pseudo bulbs that we've got there have already bloomed and I've only got one pseudo bulb left to bloom. I just can't remember which ones have and which ones haven't. Probably if I get a little bit closer in there and take my glasses off so I can see close up, then maybe I'll be able to tell which ones have bloomed. But at least we're gonna get something from that one. And I can see another one by my thumb there. There's another growth coming there. So that's the Soto Anum. Now last year in August, I had, I'll just kind of zoom in over here, this wonderful Oncidium Sherry Baby put a massive bloom spike out and if you see my video I think it's titled it could be Oncidium Cinnamon Twinkle uh, that also has my Sherry Baby featuring in there and those two big fat bulbs that you can see there or those three big fat bulbs I think it was the two actually uh, had the most wonderful bloom spike on it was at least it was probably about two and a half feet long now these ones here these two new growths that you can see uh, i mean for a start they're much much smaller in terms of pseudo bulbs and there's absolutely no way they're going to chuck a spike out at the moment so it looks like i've got a bit a bit more of a weight on the on the sherry baby i think that's going to be another 12 months before anything happens to that it was in bloom like over winter time but I just can't see that throwing anything up. You never know, but it probably would have done it by now. So that the Sherry Baby, we'll have to see. It's, it seems happy enough. It's just the fact that it's not, it's not the growth isn't as vigorous as it was when it had these big pseudo bulbs. So we that's so that's a let's wait and see, orchid. I think. Okay, just as a little interlude from the orchids, I bought this neem oil very recently. Um, now I've never used neem oil before, I've just heard so many people talking about it. I've always been of the systemic insecticide brigade, but having seen what happens to some of my plants when they get this systemic stuff on them, especially the Jesneriads, they really, really do mutate. Now, what I'm going to ask people here, I'm going to throw it open to the comments. I know I could Google it, but it's a good idea to do a little bit of both, isn't it? A bit of Google and uh, a little bit of people's own 
recommendations and experiences. So at the moment, as we stand, I have no idea what to do with this stuff. Uh, obviously it gets sprayed on, but I don't know what kind of recipe you use or and it doesn't say on it. It just says go to the website. So I could do that and I probably will at some point. But the reason I'm asking is because I've noticed, I've never had this in all my years of, of, of having a greenhouse. And I've had a greenhouse, dare I say it's nearly 30 years. But this one's only just over, it's about 18 months now, this one. Uh, I've never had a white fly infestation up until now and this is what these yellow sticky pads are for but unfortunately they're catching everything except white fly I think there's a few white fly just on the edge there so what I want to know is what do I do with neem oil and can I put it on pretty much every single plant in here and does it have to be like all surfaces bottom surface and top surface as well um, so far the white flies seem to be congregating over this area of which there are not many orchids over here there are a few but not many uh, most of the orchids are over here and over towards the back so i'm not really sure what these white fly are doing whether they're sucking sap um, i'm guessing they are so we'll have to find out anyway i'll have to do a bit more research on that but if anyone could uh, give me their experiences of neem oil that would be really useful to me and I can get things sprayed and hopefully rid myself of this pest. Okay, so we are going to move upwards for the next one. So this is my Cilogeny speciosa. And the reason I have this one up in the rafters is because these blooms... Well, I'll just take it down for a second. Gosh, that needs a water. Um, these blooms, if you're looking at them downwards, if they're on a bench, and all you can see are the sepals at the top or the top of the petals as well it's just not the same as looking up at it they just seem to be the kind of orchid that are designed to look up at um, I put it up in the rafters also because it seems to be the only one that can stand being so close to the glass yes there is shading on there but it just really doesn't seem to mind you can see there's no practically no damage at all considering it's in the sun it's in the same kind of position that i have my vanda my single vanda that's never bloomed uh, these blooms are lovely looking up at them however they don't last that long i tend to find each one lasts about a week but the good thing is it keeps pumping more out so there's one there a big fat one there there's another couple there that are about to come there's another one over there and i've already cut several off uh, it seems to be a, a really easy plant, easy in inverted commas, for my particular situation. So that's Sologeny, Sologeny speciosa. There are actually two kind of separate rhizomes in there that for some reason I split right early on and I put them back together and I thought, why have I done that? Why have I split them and given myself two pots to water instead of just having a nice kind of show plant? Um, so they're back together and they seem happy for it. So that's my Stilogeny speciosa. Okay, so we are down on the ground here because for some reason I have put my Dendrobium kingianum and my Dendrobium delicatum on the ground. Probably it's just because they'd finished blooming and I had nowhere else to put them. Um, we have two new canes, three new canes on this one. This is the kingianum, so we've got one there, one there, one over there. Uh, it only did two the previous year but this last year it bloomed so every single one of these canes bloomed now because i've never had this like beyond one blooming i'm not really sure whether it blooms again from the same canes now every single one every single cane bloomed this last year now does that mean they will come again i mean looking in the top here like with the the dead kind of bloom spike there i would guess not but perhaps somebody who's had one for more than a year can tell me on that one um, this one this was a present from ed and this one is probably too young to bloom yet but we'll see again we'll see over as time goes on somebody did suggest to me that this isn't actually kingianum it's a uh, berry odor now I really don't know conditions are the same as far as i'm concerned but it doesn't look like my berry odor i have to say it was a white it is a white one but i know you can get kingianum in white so uh who knows i believe this is the parent anyway of berry odor so it may be it may not um my feeling is it isn't but if anybody has any other input on that stick it in the comments i'd love to know now you might remember my video on pluralist restrepioides and what I did, I took my newer 
growths from this plant and I potted them up in this basket and the older ones I put in there and you know I'm still and I talked about this at the time I just don't know I'm just not that happy with it I, I don't really find that it does much for me even when it blooms the blooms are a bit kind of meh as far as I'm concerned I think if it's really really well grown but for some reason even the younger growth doesn't seem that happy with conditions in my greenhouse I've got it right in line of a fan because um, I was told that that would get rid of all the black spots on it and yet yeah, well there are no black spots on it all these marks are actually the shedding from this uh, asparagus fern here uh, it doesn't look it's not dying it's okay but it just doesn't seem to be absolutely thriving if I'm going to chuck one it's going to be this this older one this one just doesn't seem to be doing anything all I just noticed a new leaf coming up there but the kind of it, it sends a leaf up and then the new growth dies I mean that one was a brand new leaf and then that died off oh, maybe something to do with the heat over summer I don't know but uh, I might chuck that one keep that one see what happens see if we get some blooms on it I have had some blooms on it in the past but as I say they're a bit kind of inconsequential and to my to my eye anyway they don't really do a great deal for me i know i remember oliver from oliver's greenhouse everybody remembers him he, he really liked his but and his actually did you know i'll give him give him that his did look a lot better than mine so that might might be it so this is my dendrobium berry odor and this one put great show on for me and it was another one that was bought quite recently over the last 12 months and as with most of the orchids that i buy when i do eventually get into the roots of them uh, well they usually aren't any because they're normally in like a, a plug thing so i repotted it after it had finished and i removed all that plug and you can see lots of new roots there you can also see the metal uh, state that i had to put in there because it didn't have any roots but it seems a very very um, easy plant to grow in my environment this is producing a cakey there that's going to come off and i may well pot that one up because I really like berry odor and I think that will be a nice present to give somebody well as you can see to me that looks nothing like well when I say nothing like there, there is quite a significant difference between that to me anyway and what I think of as the Kingianum uh, that's a lot more separate uh, spread out um, the canes don't look quite as thick but a bit longer the leaves are a bit longer um, but anyway it is what it is so that's my very old I really really hope that that puts on a nice show for me again this year okay now we are reaching into the deep dark recesses of my greenhouse here so over here we have my two oncidium twinkles I'm gonna have to put these on the floor because I can't hold on to them properly and point things as well now this is another one of these things where I thought why on earth why did I take that off and separate it out? Why didn't I stick it on with the other one? So these, these twinkles did a really, really good job of flowering last year. It would have been last, uh, like autumn, winter time. And since I mounted them, for some reason, they just don't seem to be, they're, they're growing, they're okay. They put loads of new pseudo bulbs on, but look at the state of the leaves. They just don't seem to be that happy and um, they're not in the direct sun they're not in shade they're in a bright position they are they are shaded sufficiently but they do seem to be showing signs of sun damage now i know as i said before in my greenhouse you you've got a real job trying to keep that sun when it's out and it's perpendicular to the uh, to where these plants are you've got a real job to to kind of shade it and I'm wondering whether it's still too much for them. It was, just, you know, where they are, it's just too much of a, a bright spot and I need to get them a little bit more shaded. That may be it. I'm also looking at it, trying to look closely here. And there, there are kind of, um, I don't know, it's like a dust of some sort. I don't think it's anything like spider mite, nothing too nasty. It may just be purely dust because this is a rainless environment and dust and all sorts of detritus does build up on leaves quite rarely anyway i get the hose pipe on it but it's been quite a while since i did it so yeah they're not looking spectacular i would have expected if these were going to throw out some bloom spikes well they really better do it pretty quickly because going off when they flowered last year and they did an absolutely amazing job they put a great show on but uh 
I don't know whether they're going to do the same thing a lot this year. So I may have to experiment with moving them about and try and get them into perhaps a slightly shadier spot if I can. So they're my Oncidium Twinkles. So I've got two Bulbophyllum Elizabeth and Buckleberry. Never bloomed for me, but you can see there something's happening, but I'm guessing that's going to be another pseudo bulb and another leaf. They seem okay at doing that, but they only tend to do it in the hottest month of the year. I'm just wondering whether it's just not warm enough for them. Um, I think they're probably one of those orchids that really, really like nice warm temperatures for more than one month of the year. I'll do my best here. Uh, it never really drops in this side of the greenhouse below about 16, 17 degrees Celsius, but that may not be enough. And I've got another one over there which is exactly the same and again the very bottom pseudo bulb is putting out a new growth. So it's not dead, I'll give it a chance, maybe at some point it will reward me. So this like miniature Vanda style plant over here is a Renanthera Citerina cross with Monachica. I've also stuck in the my Rinko Stylus Celestis, which kind of looks like it's nearly dead. Uh, but the the Renanth the you know, the Renanthera isn't dead. It's doing okay, and um, it sent this kind of root right up into the sky here, which I guess is going to die off at some point. And there were some roots sticking out the bottom, which I repotted it and put it back in. So Kurt, in terms of the Renanthera. I believe it's like uh, a Vanda, in which case you have a really loose uh, media, or you could even have them out, you know, just burr rooted like you would for a Vanda. And um, you water it and then you let it go completely dry, which is what I'm doing. It's in a fairly high light situation, but I did read quite recently that it does like in the winter time, like a quite a drop so the information i read i don't know how right this is again if anybody's been growing these it can help me with this uh, the information i read that during the winter months it needs to move down to about 10 degrees celsius and it's only if it gets that winter drop that it will then put on the bloom and it's not bloomed for me since i bought it, it bloomed it was in bloom when i bought it and it has put new growth on but it's not it's not bloomed so I'm wondering whether during the winter time I need to go and put that over into the other side and give it that cooler winter rest. In fact, I might do that when I finish this video because it's definitely not going to put anything on at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's the Renanthera. Well, there's not a great deal to say about fowls, but we've got a few fowls over here. Uh, that's putting on a good show at the moment. There's another one down there that's not blooming. There's one down here that's about to bloom, a lovely white one and this one that just this was actually my very first orchid <laughs> this one has just keeps coming and coming and coming um i did take some moss off there it just seems to be better now that it's not got that big plug of moss i've noticed a few more roots coming out from it too it's not kind of unyellowed the yellowing leaves but uh just the fact that it's putting some new root growth on i suppose does seem to help so uh, it's a no ID one, but it's still a nice one to look at. They do struggle in this greenhouse because uh, they like that kind of even temperature, don't they? From like 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. They don't really want to go much below above that or much below that. And uh, I struggle to, to keep that, especially over the winter time. And in the summertime, of course, it can get up to like 35 Celsius in here. So uh, anyway, this, this particular one, this, this what, uh, particular plant, does seem to be one that is a little bit more forgiving of that of those swings so we've got a few down here in the warm side to point out so i've got my zygo over here again did a video on this one and you can see new growth there at the side now i'm thinking that the larger new growth is the new pseudo bulb and the smaller one could possibly be a spike although looking at it a bit closely now it just looks like a smaller version of the bigger one so whether i get a spike on that this year remains to be seen but at least it's got new growth and it's got new roots coming out so that's always a good sign and i am managing to keep it just about moist without going too soggy wet so that is my zygopedalum and then next to it i've got my brassia this was another one that suffered from the sun in early march looking better now a little bit of concertina ring uh, some new pseudo bulbs so i'm expecting this one does kind of spike a couple of times a year so i'm expecting another spike on that within the next couple of months 
Epicat layer. So this one is, oh gosh, I can't remember. So there we go. Epicat layer, Volcano Trick, crossed with Lelio Cat layer, Janet Sparkle. Who gives these names? Right, so the problem with this one, it's probably a problem most people will want to have. But every time I think it's finished flowering and I want to repot it, it sends up another leaf and st almost straight away it has another reblooming on it. So yeah, that's a good problem to have, isn't it? But I do want to repot it because of this. <laughs> now it's grown all that in my care and I, I don't like it. I don't like having all these roots out of pots and my problem is going to be what am I going to do with these when I do repot it up whether I can actually get rid of some of the elderly side of the rhizome I don't know but again there's a new growth coming there there's a new growth there another one there it's just so flipping vigorous this one uh, so we'll see I'll, I'll refrain from doing anything to it until it's absolutely certain it's finished blooming or I've knocked it over that many times I've killed it stay still uh, we've also got our BLC Xing Fong Little Son Young Min Golden Boy so yet another one had no roots not my fault it was just the way it came took all the plug away and they were all dead but again it seems to be quite vigorous and I've done it at the right time of the year and we've got those four growths there lots of roots coming down so I am expecting some blooms on that in the not too distant future so my Lelia onsets so the story behind this was this was the second one that I had the first one arrived again with literally no roots and really really shriveled pseudo bulbs so I asked for another one and this one has got tons of roots on it so much so that they are poking through the bottom um, and I got this new growth on it and I thought oh great this is this is going to be one of them great big long spikes and then would you believe it it looks like another pseudo bulb with a leaf so whether something will come out of the center of that I don't know because I've never had a Lelia Ancets before I'm thinking not I'm thinking that it needs to come from the side uh, but I guess we'll see, we'll see. So it's, at least it's healthy and it's doing a good job at the moment of... Ah, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. I think that's the, in the centre, will be my bloom spike there. Yes, well, that's cheered me up. Great. So this was the great big catlia that I did a video on, which seems like forever ago. I know these are, sh these are shriveling. All I'm trying to do here, again, I've seen some, I can't remember whether it's Ed. I get all my information off Ed. I can't remember whether I've seen Ed do this. Somebody's did it. The problem with cat layers is they, can, they tend to like go off in all directions, don't they? And they take up an awful lot of greenhouse space. So I've been trying, probably a little bit too late, really. I guess you should do it from when they first start growing. But they do seem to be responding. Uh, I just keep tying it up it's a bit like putting braces on you know on your teeth or retainers as you americans call them uh, and i keep tightening it up a little bit and trying to get them so they're going more vertical so that uh, they're not taking up all the space so this has got two new growths so that's that one there this one that here and um, it does seem to have something in the sheath so that'll be great when that comes because it did look really really nice when it first uh, arrived in the greenhouse and it's a shame for some reason these leaves are only quite small i'm not quite sure why that should be uh, oh yes I, I kind of am really because it didn't have any roots did it it's the same old story anything that arrives at my greenhouse has no roots i can only really blame myself really because i'm not really paying a massive amount for them so that does have loads of roots now um, that will at some point be a fantastic display for me the other cat layer that i got at the same time that i got that one again that's getting the same treatment now loads of new growth on it tons of roots so i'm hoping that will start to bloom at some point none of these growths yet are anywhere near mature enough uh, my dendrobium sarnoctyl and black again was another one with no roots and this one did you detect a theme here this one has some nice looking blooms on i think they are much smaller than when it first arrived probably again because it had no roots 
uh, and some of these leaves are looking a little desiccated but it does have two new growths though you can see and they, they are nowhere near as loose in the pot as they were at first so we've got roots as well so that one the trick for that one is just think well it's like a phalaenopsis isn't it it's a, a dendrobium phalaenopsis and so treat it accordingly and it will be fine just don't let it go really cold so this one is our RLC Chialin Red Cat again another one that had no roots again not my fault and a lot of these leaves are looking a little bit desiccated but again we know why there are new growths on it and it does have some roots you can just see one there uh, making its way down so i'm sure that one will recover before winter time you've seen the miltoniopsis quite recently this is a brand new growth here there's only a tiny little bit of concertina ring i'm not quite sure why i'm getting any to be honest uh, i'm doing a really good job of not watering it I only water it when I feel it's almost on the verge of drying out and even in August, funnily enough, it's taking practically two weeks before it's needing a rewater. and this is probably why I've rotted them in the past because if, if in the middle of August it, it can stay moist for so long then you've absolutely no chance in winter, it's, not, it's no wonder you, you let them rot in winter. What I'm going to do with the Miltoniopsis come winter Obviously it's going to stay in this warm side, so it will stay at roughly 16 degrees Celsius. But I really, really will not water it for quite a long time. I'll really make sure that it's absolutely dry before, or practically dry, before I water it again. Uh, because that's just what my conditions seem to, seem to be lending themselves towards with some of these orchids. Over in the corner you've seen, I mean it's not long since I did that video, and they've grown since then. This is the Miltonia Spectabilis. I did used to have the Miltonia Sunset and I killed it, unfortunately, which was a shame. It was very early on in my orchid career. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that some of these will now start to develop into sheaths because I love the blooms on that thing. They're really nice. So just before we come up to my new purchases, uh, you've seen the Rinko Stylis new Lucineri here. Again, I'm getting up to the point where it probably needs like a remount. I don't know how long we tend to wait for these things to come. It did have three bloom spikes, but I'm pretty sure it didn't last anywhere near as long as they did previously. So whether that's something to do with the mount that they're on. Um, I've never really shown my vanda. Um, it had, oh, there's a big fly on it there. Can you see that fly in the middle? <laughs> it's a, a fly suspended in suspended animation. Oh, it's moving now. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm sure one of the uh, Nepenthes pictures will soon capture the little blighter. So it's got tons of roots on it. Uh, this one, actually, again, it's another one that I thought it's just not going to do anything for me. But when I looked up the, the type it is, so it's a Vanda, it's a hybrid, it's called Propathom Gold. You can just see the label there. And the blooms that I've seen on it are really, really nice. So I'm going to hang on a little bit longer and see if we can eventually get some kind of a bloom spike on there. There's no reason why not. It's, it has had plenty of sunshine over the summer, so let's just hope. I know people all say to me, well, get it outside, but it's not that I'm lazy. It's just I like everything to be in one place just because I mean, it's hard enough watering things as it is, but if I start distributing things throughout the house and throughout the garden, I'll never keep up with it. You know, I'm not retired. I'm still working two jobs here as well as, as, well as looking after the greenhouse. But uh, anyway, we'll see. So hopefully this will. I don't know the bottom leaves look a bit desiccated, I know, but it's always looked like that. It doesn't matter how much water I give it, the bottom leaves always seem to look like that. So that's the Vanda and the Rinker Stylus. Okay, we're nearly there, nearly up to the new purchases. So my Slogeny Cristata. Again, I did a video on this one quite a while back because the leaves underneath kind of went brown. I don't know if you can just about see that i'm just trying to show I me mean, they're new ones you can just see the see the brownness on there they're the old leaves now i tried spraying it with all sorts but as you can see the new leaves are not showing anything like that same uh, discoloration but i'm just going to ask if anybody knows whether these are too shriveled are they supposed to look that like that at this stage of the year do i need, i mean i do water it i water it about once a week depending on what the weather's like um, 
I'm just wondering whether a soak might get them to kind of rehydrate or is that just the what you know just what they look like at this time of year I don't know because I've never had one before so uh, I might just try soaking it and see and see if we can get some blooms next year so that's Slogeny Cristata um, I will quickly pick up the Oncidium sweet sugar again nice growth on there nice blue nice uh, nice blooms it did have nice blooms on it i'm hoping we get some spikes from there that seems quite happy at the moment so that's the sweet sugar the two masavalias here so if you remember what happened with these uh, when i took them out of the pots because i did the first repot on them this year when i took them out of the pots they were just in like a big plug of sphagnum moss that was what they came in both of them were the same and i've since repotted them into sphagnum peat moss and perlite and sphagnum moss as well um, there's a little bit of debate i think in the comments as to whether they would take to that particular brand of peat moss because i believe some peat moss can have some nutrients in it something to do with them um, uh, reusing some of the old returned moss peat moss so anyway they seem to be okay the the new growths are coming down there there's new growths there's new roots going down into the so into the media so i'm quite happy with them at the moment uh, yes we've got blackening leaves but again i think it's just where they are in the greenhouse this is about my shadiest place oh oh got some spike there there's a spike so there you go there's the proof that all is reasonably well for now I quite like that. This is snowbird, so these are like nice white blooms. Um, obviously, the Ignea is a better one, uh, even though these leaves at the moment are looking dreadful. Some of them are looking dreadful after the sun that we've had. But I'm sure it will recover because for the rest of the year, well, whether you can hear what the weather's like at the moment. Shall I give you a little sneak peek of what the weather's like? Just quickly, I don't know if you can see out there. yeah pretty bad pretty bad i think it's time to show you my new purchases so let's just move on over tada what do you think of that one now isn't that nice that's probably the nicest it'll look <laughs> in my care uh, hopefully it'll look better at some point we've got another bloom spike there i thought for the size of the plant that is lucky these are really really nice blooms and this again i went for it because it's not one that i've actually got so this is uh there you go rossio glossum grand now was there any on the end there that's been smudged off rossio glossum grandy i don't know and i had a quick look up of this one and i think it has another name as well i think the rossio glossum might be the old name yeah, there's a little cat here. This is all. This is my things to do table. So I've got a fern there that needs repotting. So this is the other one. Now you can't quite see see this one in its full glory just yet, but it does have a spike. So that's good, isn't it? So this is a hab habanaria. What's that? Habanaria. Habanaria medusae. Habanaria medusae. And the photos that I've seen of this on the web look absolutely spectacular. So hopefully that will do something great for me too. It seems to be potted up in some kind of road gravel. So uh, we need to get in there and have a look at that. So that's my things to do table. So I think that is all everything orchids in my greenhouse for now. I can't think of anything else at the moment. Um, it's not an orchid, but I'll just give you a little quick sneak peek of my latest purchase over there in the corner that's a nice one isn't it it's exactly the same as that one up there but a different color so with that one i will leave you at that point i think and i hope you enjoyed this video all about orchids and i hope you will give me a thumbs up if you did and for now i'll see you on the next one bye